Hello everybody, it is Nia and I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on Double Dragon 4. So when I first heard about Double Dragon 4, one of my homeboys posted to uh, my Twitter account to let me know that this game was going to be coming out for PS4 and PC. So obviously I was very excited to hear about the release of this game because when, when I was a child, one of my favorite games of all time was Streets of Rage 2. And of course, since that was a beat-em-up, games like Double Dragon and Final Fight and things like that interest me all because of that. Streets of Rage was so good during my formative years that it honestly was one of the games that shaped the way that I look at games for the rest of my life. Unfortunately, when I was younger, we didn't really have a lot of money, so I didn't really get a chance to play other beat-em-ups like Final Fight and Double Dragon. So these are games that I've kind of experienced vicariously through other people about them talking about it and you know telling me about their experiences and things like that. So all of that aside I was really excited to experience Double Dragon 4 since I had never played a Double Dragon game before. The beat em up genre is one that I would really like to see resurrected in modern day. So luckily for me I've had the honor of receiving a review code courtesy of Arc Systems so I'm gonna be giving you guys my thoughts on Double Dragon 4. Before I tell you all of the things that I did not like about Double Dragon 4, I'm going to tell you all of the things that I think that Double Dragon 4 does right. So firstly, it's only $6.99. So if you're a longtime Double Dragon fan, this just might be enough to reel you in to buy this game. I really love the retro artwork. Any game that has like a retro style pretty much appeals to me because the 8-bit and the 16-bit era is the time when I started to become a conscious gamer. I've just loved it so much and even in my adulthood I still continue to play video games. Although there were some areas in the game that looked a little bit uninspired, it begins to look better about halfway through the game. I think a lot of the levels begin to have a little bit more pizzazz behind them. Now when I first booted up Double Dragon 4 like it was just this really nostalgic feeling because the screen was just the simplistic minimalist title screen that I remember from back in the day. All you could see was story and options and some other little tabs as well. You press start you're immediately greeted by these 8-bit graphics and it just felt so nuanced for me. It reminded me of simpler times when games weren't really trying to be anything but games. Back when games merely existed to be fun. Back in the day it was really exciting to be in your character's shoes and just beat people up just because, right? And that's kind of how I felt the moment when my character first punched the first enemy in the face. <laughs> Another thing that I like about Double Dragon 4 is that you can pretty much pick up wherever you left off with the story mode. You know like how back in the day if you wanted to beat a game you pretty much had to beat it all the way through because there were no saves. But wherever you left off in Double Dragon 4 all you have to do is go to the story tab on the menu screen and press either the start button or the options button depending on what type of controller that you're using. And that will be able to take you to whatever stage that you were that you completed last. Unfortunately, there were a lot of issues that I had with Double Dragon 4 and uh, one of them was the physics, man. The physics and the animations in the game just were not doing it for me. I know there's probably gonna be some people out there that will call me crazy because, you know, here I am, a person who started gaming back in the 18 and 16-bit era. But as much as I love that era and I love the art styles that are from that era and I love the way that a lot of indie developers especially have kind of taken the 8-bit and 16-bit art style and has used it as inspiration for their own modern games, I do think that there's still some upgrades that need to happen in games that decide to go that route. So even if the game has a retro aesthetic, it still needs to have upgraded controls, it needs to have upgraded physics, it needs to have upgraded animations. In my opinion, the, cam the combat, while very authentic, I mean it feels how you it would feel if you were playing this on an NES, it was too stiff man. I feel like in this era, we kind of need to get away from that. Like you can be authentic, but there is a such thing as being too authentic. And sometimes I kind of felt really frustrating because there would be times where I would die 
simply because I wasn't agile enough to like dodge a punch or because I fell to the abyss for not having enough jumping range. Like to me, that kind of messed me over a little bit. I wasn't too thrilled about the way that it played. The music in normal mode and retro mode to me kind of felt a little bit dull and uninspired. You know, I understand that with the games like this, you want to try to stay true to the original. You want to try to keep it as authentic as possible. But to me, I feel like the music was a little bit overly simplistic. There's ways to keep your soundtrack authentic and simplistic while at the same time having more diversity in the sounds that you use in your soundtrack. The enemies in Double Dragon 4 to me kind of felt boring and lifeless a little bit. I also felt like the enemy design kind of left a little bit of diversity. And I know how back in the day, those old beat em up games, especially with Streets of Rage, a lot of the enemies were kind of like copy and paste. I understand, again, that that's kind of what they were going for. They were going for an authentic appeal or an authentic feel. But to me, it just came off a little flat, a little dated. Also, the dialogue is kind of meh. It didn't really make me feel anything, really. And it didn't really have any semblance at all of an interesting plot device. And I understand that games like this, even back in the day, they weren't really created to tell like this really intense story. They really kind of only existed to beat people up. I mean, that's why they're called beat em ups, right? But at the same time, I feel that you should at least care, at least to a small degree, about what's going on in the game and the plot itself and the story itself. And even the dialogue from the actual characters, the stuff that your main character is saying, and then the things that the enemy is saying to you, it just kind of seemed meh. Like it was kind of written very quickly. I don't really know what was, what was up with the dialogue, but it just was meh. All in all, I have to be honest with you guys, I cannot recommend Double Dragon 4. And although I personally long for the day that beat em ups do get their shine again, this is not the reboot that we need in the modern era to kick off the genre again. And it really pains me to say this, but if you're looking for a game of this fashion, you know, the whole retro thing, I'm sure there's some indie beat em ups out there too. but I would go to my nearest digital shop, whether that's Steam, the PlayStation Store, the Xbox Store, the Nintendo eShop, and just browse the indie section and see what the indies are doing. I feel that in Double Dragon 4's attempt at being authentic, it kind of limited the possibilities of how this game could modernize or innovate within the genre. So let me know, have you had a chance to play Double Dragon 4? What do you think about Double Dragon 4? If you disagree with me, tell me why you feel that way. Let's discuss, man. Talk about it in the comments below. And I will talk to you guys later. Peace.